Hi and welcome to a short lesson about how to change common boring gothic window into a unique fantasy window. I'm kidding, gothic windows are never boring, but they might look, let's call it casual and a little generic. And as a concept designer, you don't want to create casual generic concepts. Here are two identical sketches. The one on the left will be the most typical example I could think of and the right one will be altered into a fantasy window. An arch above the window can be supported by fragments of columns' heads. It's not supported in a constructional meaning, its purpose is purely visual. Motif could be floral, geometrical or even animal. I chose wine leaves and fruits. An arch itself can be just slightly decorated with cylindric framing. Before we start with the fantasy version, we have to decide what kind of fantasy building it would be. Some demonic building, like a demon's temple. Then we could use skulls, demon's heads and maybe some spikes. Yes, yes, in real gothic cathedrals there were also motifs of demons, gargoyles and skulls. So don't be afraid to exaggerate. Or maybe an elven house. Then you should use very smooth, delicate, almost fluid shapes with motifs like slightly surreal trees. After some serious thinking, I came up with an idea of mysterious vampiric window. So here we have heads of young pretty ladies with bat wings. Their hair will create a complex ornament Elongated, sharpened forms usually look dark and mysterious. A typical column with typical arches. The column is round, its base is quite simple as well. The fantasy column is a real field to show off. I just have to decide what I want to show. I wanted to avoid too many direct associations with vampires, like even more bats, skulls or long fangs, so I'm just drawing a mysterious figure covered with creeping but slightly withered wine. Somehow slender detailed human figures gives gothic some fantasy vibe, as real medieval sculptures were often stocky with relatively large heads and narrow shoulders, and colored with almost kitschy manner. Now when the ideas are kind of crystallized in my head, I can draw the rest directly in ink. So I'll start with covering existing lines with ink, and then I'll draw what's left. But first, let's get rid of the pencil lines. Just give me a few minutes for refining the already designed part. Standard arches can be decorated with something I can't call by name, but luckily I can draw it. And I can say that it's a pretty standard element. When added to the both sides, it creates a very characteristic pattern similar to a three-leaf clover. The arches will have profiles with cylindric framing in the upper part. Fantasy arches, here the imagination can roam freely. But if for some reason it doesn't, we can always use some references from French flamboyant style and some British strainer arches. Normally strainer arches were used as constructional support, but in the fantasy world 
I think I can use this idea just for building up mode. In the case of Gothic style, the border between common realism and fantasy is often blurred. Some of real Gothic decorations look like taken out from fantasy story or game. That's why I adore this style so much. It seems to defy logic, even if constructions were in fact very logical. Not necessarily super practical, but logical, if that makes sense. Now the small round part of the window. Unsurprisingly, its decorative motifs will create a three-leaf clover pattern. A round shape is a perfect space for creating some eye-catching motif, like a vampiric symbol. Something related with sharp, kind of dark cross. Just a minute for a windowsill. It can be profiled like cornices. Before moving to the glass part, I'd like to add shadows to one particular part of the window. It can be quite delicate, but for the upper areas I'll use double hatching. And then when I was meant to move to the fantasy version... Quick fix and no one will notice. Fantasy window seal will be very similar to the standard one, with one tiny difference. It has decorative supports. Shadowing is an absolutely standard procedure. Shadow casted on the decorative parts of the window is drawn with vertical lines to distinguish it easily from the own shadow of the recess in the wall. A standard window glass will be somehow decorative. It would be impossible to produce such a large glass, so this space is divided with Bly grid into small parts. During the day, glass in windows usually seems to be darkest part, so don't be afraid of strong contrasts. However, the drawing looks more alive if there is some variation in intensity of inking. glass part in the fantasy window could be truly spectacular. Actually, many real gothic windows were truly spectacular as well. But for this one I was worried that very complex stained glass motifs will distract attention from other already minutely drawn elements. So I decided that delicate vertical rectangulars with some diamond shapes will do the job. And maybe the same motif that is above the window.
I spared you watching my struggles with the rest of glass parts. I hope that you enjoyed the video and see you next time.